But it's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. The Battle of Los Angeles. It sounds like a Hollywood movie, doesn't it? A blockbuster, probably directed by Michael Bay. Surely some big special effects, maybe even a monster. Who wins the Battle of L.A.? But as long as we're talking about movies and movie analogies, Hollywood, the one that works for me is the king versus the ronin. You know what a ronin is? Most of the guys working the show today didn't. Nuno's run the show. Pat's riding shotgun and Cat is on the board. A ronin was a samurai who didn't have a master. Either his master had fallen out of favor or on the wrong side of the law or lost his power in his samurais, his guys, his soldiers, they were then rogue. They're able to do what they want. Take on empires. Take on kings. Take on dynasties. You got Ronan the Accuser in the Avengers movies. You got a movie that I don't know what it was about. Tom Cruise, Last Samurai. I mean, hell, I don't even know what that thing was about. There was a movie called Ronan with Robert De Niro, and he was some kind of secret agent, assassin over in, over in Europe. And a Ronin, I think, is what Kawhi Leonard is. I mean, think about me. Maybe he's a secret agent. Nobody knew what the hell he was going to do, right? No NBA insider saw this coming. He's a virtual GM. He constructed this deal, not just going to the Clippers, but getting Paul George out of Oklahoma City, making his own deals, not limited to the free agent market, looking across the NBA landscape. Who cares about contracts? You got three years left? Come on, PG-13. Join me to take down yet another dynasty. It's the king, LeBron James, against the Ronin, Kawhi Leonard. And I'm taking the Ronin. I'm taking the Maverick. I'm taking the guy who has, and I think will again, take down dynasties. Let's start with this. Which team do you like better? Which roster? The Lakers or the Clippers? I heard Stephen A. Smith yesterday say that he thought the Lakers duo... LeBron James and Anthony Davis was the best duo out of the two. It was better than Kawhi and PG-13, and I agree with that. In fact, yesterday on the Will Kane Show, I ranked my top five NBA duos. For what it's worth, it went something like this. After all the arguments were had, after all the hand-wringing and rebuttals and debate, at number four, KD and Kyrie. And that's because of KD's Achilles injury and Kyrie's locker room presence. Brooklyn Nets got a nice duo, but it comes in fourth in this little debate. At number three, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. We need to see playoff P be playoff P. Before I put Paul George higher, I can't say Kawhi Leonard is going to carry this entire duo past what I know and what I've seen and what is proven and what has been the core of a dynasty, and that is at number two, Steph and Clay. They've done it. Don't talk to me about what could be. I'll talk to you about what's been done. But at number one, being somewhat inconsistent, and I acknowledge that, it is LeBron and AD. I agree with Stephen A. This is the best duo in the NBA. Versatile, two of the top seven players in the league. But I don't think it's the best team. In the Battle of LA, when I take the Clippers roster and the Lakers roster, I'm looking at a well-rounded, deeper, defensive juggernaut with a better coach in the Clippers. Think about this. You got, of course... Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and Pat Beverly, who won't make eye contact with LeBron when he sees him in Las Vegas at the Summer League. Dude is locked in. And that's going to lock down some teams. You got Landry Shamit still. You got a second unit with Lou Williams and Harold that can come off and run pick and rolls. And you got the better coaching staff. That against what? Yeah, I like Danny Green. I do. I like Kyle Kuzma. You know these guys? I know Danny Green had a nice season. You know these guys don't shoot the three that well? I mean, Danny Green last year, 45%, but it was below 38 in the years leading up to that. The other guys are all under 38, closer to 35% shooting the three, and that's what LeBron and AD are going to need. The point is, as far as rosters are concerned in this battle of L.A., give me the Clippers. What? What's that? Really? Really, Nuno? You're tell- I'm being told that perpetually incorrect, the wrongest guy on ESPN, somebody if you ever find yourself with in agreement, you need to revisit your premises, start over and see how you got here. I'm being told that Ryan Hollins, former Los Angeles Clipper, agrees with me. 
on Clippers versus Lakers? You look at this Lakers squad and you see that they're stacked, but you check out the Clippers and you start going, man, they got a little bit of everything. They've got a team. They've got a, a great bench. They've got the stars now. Two of the greatest two-way players that we have ever seen play the forward position. I like to think uh, in my, my daughter name here, man. If you're, you're going to look at Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, they're somewhere below Michael Jordan and above Scottie Pippen. <sighs> Ryan Hollins agrees with me. I agree with Ryan Hollins. Let me take a couple steps back and reevaluate. Let me look back in the mirror. Am I sure that the Clippers have the better roster in the Battle of L.A.? This is a wrong side of the street to be walking down. This is the way you end up as a meme. This is the way you get it wrong. Unfortunately, a broken clock is right twice a day. And Ryan Hollins can get one right here and there. I think he's right. I think I'm right. I think as far as rosters are concerned, I'm going with the Clippers over the Lakers. But the real interesting thing is the King versus the Rogue. The King versus the Ronin. Can he take down yet another empire? Kawhi Leonard has shown you who he can be. He's shown you what he can do. Kawhi Leonard takes down one dynasty in the Miami Heat, turns around, takes down another one in the Golden State Warriors, and then, just to put a cherry on top, takes down the entire concept of the super teams in the NBA. The whole thing takes it down. Look what we were on the verge of. We're on the verge of the extension of a foregone conclusion. We're on the verge of the idea that there's no unpredictability, no drama in the NBA. We're on the verge of knowing before the season start who was likely to win the title. We're on the verge of the Lakers super team. It would have gone, inherited from the Celtics, to the Heat, to the Warriors, to the Lakers. Kawhi Leonard, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis, give them it now. That's what we were on the verge of. But because Kawhi Leonard is not a follower, because Kawhi Leonard is not a joiner, because he doesn't want your super team, and why would he? He's taken down two. Because Kawhi Leonard is a creator, an assassin. Kawhi Anthony Leonard. Three names like any other assassin. Because he's some kind of CIA operative that nobody can read his intentions or his plans or see him before they've unhatched. Because he's, I don't know, a GM. He looked across the landscape, saw there were no free agents, realized the reality of needing a duo in the NBA to compete with the Anthony Davis, LeBron James world, to compete with the Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving world, to compete maybe even with James Harden and CP3 or Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, to compete with the new dawning of the dynamic duo age. He needed a running buddy. And there wasn't one in free agency. So he called up a guy with three years left on his contract. He called up Paul George and he said, let's do this. Force a trade. Let's go to the Clippers. Let's go to L.A., but not to the super team. Let's reset the NBA. And he did. When's the last time you saw it with this competitive balance? When's the last time you went into a season going, I don't know, a third of the league? Ten teams? A third of the fan bases have a real reason to root for the outcome of the NBA season? You got Clippers fans, they're in. Lakers fans still have a shot. Sneaky, the Nuggets, by the way, standing pat, adding Jeremy Grant, Michael Porter Jr. getting healthy. The Nuggets need to be watched. The Jazz, the Rockets, the Blazers. Are we forgetting about the Warriors? By the way, let's get back to that in a moment because we have all, like Eminem said, forgot about Steph. And that's just the West. In the East, you could add the Bucks, the Sixers, the Celtics. That's nine right there off the top of my head. That's nine teams that you can make a good argument, have a shot to win it all. And that's because of Kawhi. That's Kawhi's decision. That's Kawhi's GMing. That's Kawhi killing the super team era. You know who was into this? You know who is even more extreme than Kawhi? You know what I really like? I like Dame. 
See Damian Lillard the other day, Summer League, talking about everything that's going on, everybody joining up, super teams. Even even more radical than Kawhi Leonard. Dame said, I'm not into this, man. I guess I'm old school. And it's become huge because it's sometimes the, the coaches and the, the front offices, they don't have as much power as the players. You know, the players are so friendly now. I think in the past it was like, you know, Jordan probably didn't go out searching and trying to get guys to come join them. They was competing against each other. Now it's... Well, they got three stars on their team, so I know this guy and that guy. I'm going to try to get them to come to my team. So I think you see it a lot more now, where it's just players recruiting players is more powerful than a, a pitch meeting with the team. That's just what it is now. So it's a huge part of the game now. That's Portland Trailblazers guard Damian Lillard. By the way, more extreme than Kawhi Leonard, more old school. I not need anybody. going to do it the way it was dealt. Play the hand that was dealt to him. See what he can do. He said more. By the way, sitting uh, courtside, I think, with the jump at Summer League, he said, just not who I am. I'm not a team-up type of person. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I've said it in the past. Like, I would almost just rather, if I'm going to lose trying to do it the way I'm doing it, I can live with that knowing that I really mean that. Well, you I really, that. You that's what just, I prefer. But, you ain't just saying it. You live it. Yeah. You like, that's really it. how I feel. Yeah. So, like, I don't think it's nothing wrong with what guys are doing. Mm-hmm. You know, when I see it, I just, I kind of get excited about the challenge of it. I like it. Damian Lillard's way the best. I like Kobe with the Lakers for 20 years. I like Dirk with the Mavericks. For 20 years. I like Duncan with the Spurs for almost 20 years. I like allegiances. I like depth of connection. I like loyalty. I like being able to invest in a team. That's how I do it. My fandom, and I'm honest with you, Will Kane here filling in for Stephen A. You can normally catch me 3 to 6 Eastern on the Will Kane Show. I'm honest with you, man. I'm a fan. Anybody that's seen me on First Take or my own show knows, look, I'm Dallas. I was born and raised outside of Dallas. So that's what I was given. That was my birthright. My birthright was the Cowboys, the Mavericks, the Rangers, and the Texas Longhorns. What was your birthright? And by the way, your mom or your dad can brainwash you. That's the one caveat. They can give you some kind of, you know, I know you're born in New York, but we're really Dallas fans. That's what I say to my boys. Live in New York City and think it's a suburb of Dallas. That's my boys wearing their Cowboys gear to school in Harlem. That's my boys just have to deal with the hand that I dealt with them. Just like Damian Lillard. That's how you do it. You deal the hand or play with the hand that was dealt to you. But if you're not going to do that, at least restore competitive balance. And that's what Kawhi Leonard did. That's what he did, man. He took down the Heat. He took down the Warriors. And now he's taken down the Super Team era. And I'm in on that Ronin. I'm in on that Empire Killer. That Challenger. I'm in on that being the second best way to do this. Don't join up. Don't become a super team. And that's why in the battle for LA, it's not just the roster. I'm going with the stepchild, the redheaded stepchildren of the NBA. I'm not afraid to go, obviously, Nets over Knicks, but Clippers over Lakers because I'm taking Kawhi over LeBron. I'm taking the rogue to take down the king. Kawhi's playing with house money. Whose legacy has more on the line? Who has more pressure? I mean, Kawhi has won two titles, two finals MVPs, and he's done it when being on the lesser of the team. Toronto Raptors against the Golden State Warriors? Please. Take on a super team in Miami? Did it. He's Bona fides are proven, man. He's playing with house money. If he wins a title with yet his third team, it's sky's the limit. And if he loses, there's no downside. He's not going belly up. LeBron could win a title with his third team, but the pressure's all on him to do it. Now he's got AD. Now he's got the Lakers. He's got everything. And you telling me that legacy can't take a hit? Oh, please. That legacy can take a hit. Kings have more to lose. Ronins play for themselves. Battle of L.A., give me Kawhi Leonard. Give me the Clippers over LeBron and the Kings. Chuck, in L.A., what's up, man? You're on the Stephen A. Smith Show with Will Kane. Hey, Will, thanks so much for taking my call. I wanted to back you up on your Clippers. Uh, they do have the better team. A lot of that is because they have the better bench. And what a lot of this will come down to is – how many minutes the starters for each team can actually play throughout the season? Because we know Kawhi's not going to play 82. We know LeBron's not going to play 82. 
So where is that going to get filled in the rest of those minutes? And with Harrell and uh, Lou Williams, you got the best bench in the league. Totally. That makes them the much stronger team. Totally agree. Now, hold on. Let's be fair, though, Chuck. Okay, here's where the Lakers are right now. They got Caldwell Pope. They've got Quinn Cook, who I think is a nice signing from the Warriors. They got Jared Dudley. They have some depth. It's not to the Clippers level. I agree with you. The Clippers right now are the more well-rounded team. On paper, as we stand right now, Clippers in the Battle of L.A. One more, Mike in Jersey City. What's up, Mike? You're on the Stephen A. Smith Show with Will Kane. 